Hey everybody, how are you all doing? Um, yeah, got a cool one here for you today. Um, I uh, <laughs> I call this one Claude found the APT, and mainly because I was uh, doing some work and some research with uh, with Claude Cursor and a uh, Splunk MCP that I wrote. Um, if you haven't used an MCP before or know what an MCP is, basically it just grants the LLM or AI access to different tools. Um, and so in this particular case, model context protocol, Tropic, um, I wrote a very simple MCP that connects to Splunk, um, mainly to just run queries. And I think it did a bunch of other things. Uh, I, I made the video that we're going to we're, we're going to look at here in a little bit. I made it back in March, so it's been a while, um, but uh, kind of a little bit more context around it all. What I did um, wanted to share first. So this is what I used. Um, I used this tool called PowerShell Hunter. Oh, yeah. What I meant to say was there was no APTs harmed in this uh, recording um, or actually found this work for clickbait because I need you here because you're awesome. Uh, and you, you like to watch these fun videos. And so anyway, I used uh, PowerShell Hunter. Um, within the tool set here is a tool uh, called AD Threat Hunting. And there's actually a bunch of test scripts in here. Um, you can look into this uh, if you have time. It's really awesome. It's pretty powerful and I think it's broken. So I need to go back and fix it. But if you go into the test area, uh, these scripts will set up your Active Directory environment to allow, to collect all the proper logging um, and whatnot. So related to like audit policies, log in, log off, lockouts, log on, all this like noisy stuff. Um, and then what you can do is the tool set comes with the ability to uh, do password sprays, brute force, things like that. You can set up particular user accounts. Um, you can also just have it do all the scenarios at once. Uh, the one cool thing about it, I think it's under this one, is it will kind of iterate through username patterns. Uh, so what you'll see in a minute in our in the recorded video is uh, kind of how um, Claude uh, noticed all these different users. And the users come from this particular script, Invoke AD Threat Simulation. So I'll share the link to this so you're able to check it out and perform anything you want to perform. Um, other additional things here just to kind of show you there is cleanup uh you could test the workflow uses winrm uh rp RPC, no i think it's just winrm was the more proper one that actually worked um but yeah so using this tool and whatnot um and kind of go from there so the other thing i want to share before we dive in i wrote the mcp you're going to see in the video it is way different than the other splunk mcps out there <clears throat> in particular Splunk actually released a proper MCP uh, supported by Splunk. And this one comes with pretty much all the same features I had in mine uh, and a little bit more. And it's a lot more like ready to go. Mine was not nearly as sexy. Um, and the documentation here will kind of get you going on this. If you are uh, digging into these types of things, I highly, highly recommend um, using Cursor to connect your MCP. Uh, connecting MCPs to cursor is really easy. Um, and you have the ability to connect as many as you want. And then you can direct your uh, conversation to using the different MCPs however you want. Uh, in this particular case, what you'll see in the video, I basically was just, uh, I initially started out. All right, you know what? Let's bring it up. Okay. So I, I mostly don't want to see myself, but I want to also show myself. So um the conversation basically starts out with me saying yo claude like i need you to validate we connect to the splunk server um you can see here he's i'm gonna call him he <laughs> he's connecting to it just fine um you can kind of see from the top down what he's doing so he calls the mcp tool and cursor um queries it validates it works he's able to see the indexes the source types and things like that um, he sees that there's a couple machines in there uh, some event logs, whatever, process execution, stuff like that. So here, um, I'm like, hey, can you run this particular query in Splunk? I paste the query and I say, go ahead and run this and see what you find. And so 
uh, should paste. There it is. So there's the query. The query is basically look for command dot uh, xc and find. I think literally that's it. Just run this thing and that's it. So he's using the t stats against the endpoint data model, processes data model. Uh, he goes and hits Splunk, pulls the data back, and kind of goes from there what it ends up finding. So remember, I simulated the work uh, prior. It's been sitting in Splunk for X amount of time. And now I connected the Splunk MCP and I'm asking Claude to go in and just query, make sure it works. Uh, let's see some results. And I kind of want him to tune this query because it's just looking for command.exe. So I'm like, hey, can you please look for things that are bad? So he goes, queries it. And uh, he, this is Claude 3.7 thinking, 3.7 um, sonnet thinking. Goes and thinks about it. Back in the day in March, um, you would actually kind of have to click through the MCP calls, which is, I think, actually, you could automate all this now. You could just say run all MCP requests, which is totally fine in this regard. Like, I'd be okay with it if he's just querying the Splunk server. Um, so here you can see this. I expanded the box to kind of show, but he hit Splunk, pulled back data, and he's like, yeah, it's a lot of data. Um, we need now to focus this down to suspicious activities coming from command.exe. Yep, please do that. So he's going to run another query for some amount of time. And so here is another, I just kind of skipped ahead. Um, so here he added a bunch of things. So he's looking for PowerShell, a bunch of things on the command line, and multiple instances of a user attempting to connect to a network share with potentially incorrect credentials. Now, the way the test AD threat hunting works is that's exactly what it does. It does net use and it'll hit IPC path or whatever over and over and over using different password combinations or different user password combos. So he's like, yep, that looks pretty bad. Um, also, in my analysis, uh, you know, there's kind of like some standard stuff, Splunk UF doing things. Um, there's all these failed logon attempts and then there's just like some other activity. And uh, all of this coming from PowerShell. These patterns could indicate a password spray or brute force attempt against the domain controller, listing out the DC, uh, then using what appears to be a service account, which comes from test 80 threat hunting. That's the SBC account uh, that we kind of saw in the code there. And then he's like, do you want me to like dig into this, uh, examine any other aspects of this activity? And of course I'm like, yeah, like tell me more, right? So remember, this is Claude directing itself doing this. I'm just like, yeah, like we should write a highly tuned, capable analytic. Like we shouldn't just be shipping an analytic looking for command.exe, right? Um, so tell him, go think, go do. So here's he's thinking, um, looking for additional high confidence indicators. What else are we going to find in this data? Now, <clears throat> Kind of like stepping back as well. I'm not big on the doom and gloom of AI. And so I don't share a lot about AI usage and like particular like using MCPs or using like Claude to help refine things or whatever it may be. But as a defender, if you have the ability to use these types of tools to enhance your speed in an investigation, uh, or triage alerts coming from whatever alert generation product you are using. Um, even if you're using an EDR and you want to query the EDR for all the alerts that are being generated, which can be voluminous, you could use this particular type of vehicle uh, cursor with an MCP connected to your EDR tool to collect those things and analyze and parse through and, and look for patterns. And so you can kind of see He's looking for all these indicators. He's finding that there's something suspect obviously going on. There's definitely a password spray attack occurring here. There's a bunch of net use going on. He's starting to see this other pattern of all these accounts being targeted, which is like everything from our code here. And there appears to be some amount of cleanup occurring, which is amazing. All of this is coming from PowerShell. So note two, as a defender, you kind of pivot like this, right? You you pivot on, hey, there's these failed logons. There's all these user accounts involved. What's the logon type? Like, is it coming from network, interactive? Like, what is it? Um, and you'll see here in a second, you can kind of, he's pulling out the different patterns. There's, you know, legit opt operations related to system services, 
you know, maybe in your org, you name them service or SBC, you have different admin accounts and things like that. So now at this point, I'm like, all right, Claude, like there's something bad going on in this environment. I don't understand why I need you to go drill down into these security events um, and find out. And I think everything is in my Windows index. So now I'm just going to straight up direct him, go look for security events in the Windows index, start seeing what's going on. Now imagine doing a real investigation. You need all this context. You're pivoting. You're saying, give me the 4104s, give me all the failed logons, um, give me everything interesting that's coming from my AD logs, right? So you can see he's pulling up that query, hitting against, didn't get anything that time because he didn't generate the query properly. Um, so now he's kind of backing it out. Show me all the event codes, everything that's going out there um, or everything in the index at this point. So hitting it again, gets a bunch of results. Now he has a good idea of what's going on. There's 58 events in there for failed logon attempts. And now he wants to drill in even further. He's like, all right, 46, 25 is like, what's going on? Gets his full results back here. There's a bunch of failed logons. Uh, the many fields are missing from our output, okay, because he made up some fields. But the one thing that's kind of cool about it is he went back to pull back the fields. He wants to know all the fields that he can use now, um, which is pretty wild, right? Like this is completely automated. There's no instruction occurring here. He's just like querying, identifying, and just iterating over it as if he, I mean, this is literally the first time he's seeing this data. So he's going through, iterating over it, trying to figure out what the fields he can query against and put the patterns together to understand what's happening. So, um, yeah, I feel like I'm just like monologuing over Claude's heavy work here, all his heavy lifting. Um, so he's like, all right, so hang on, let me pause this here. So he's like, all right, I understand the pattern, the fail logon. I examine the raw XML events. I see these are structured differently than I expected. Exactly. So now he fixes his query, runs again. Now, what I think is kind of neat is not only is it just he, he kind of still doesn't understand what event logs are in here. So, but he, you can kind of see right here in the background, there's like log on type three, the failure reasons, things like that. So he's like, let's get context of these to better understand. And then he hits that query. He's like, let's look at the process that was used to initiate this password spraying attack. Watch what he finds. This is kind of neat. So now he's really drilling in. So here's me showing, you know, what posits there, but you can kind of see what he was getting out of that last query there. Um, so let's run this. He wants to see the initiating process. So he is now looking at the PowerShell 4104 logs, uh, which is the Windows PowerShell op log there. He's now hitting that. He's going to begin to pinpoint something here. Uh, he wants to run a more general search because that last one gave him no results, but he's getting close here. Very, very close. He's making up a couple fields here and there. So a thing that I would, if, if I was re-instructing on this particular uh, MCP calls or whatnot, or asking him to investigate, I probably have like a local file that has like the fields in like a YAML or some kind of YAML or, or, or example like JSON or XML output. I'd have that output and I would just pass to him like, this is what fields you have to run against the Splunk server. So adding that context would help him to better understand what he's doing the first time. So he doesn't have to hit it three times. Um, all right. So here he is. Finds that it's a PowerShell script. Let me look for the PowerShell script that was running. Okay. Now he's going to find the script. As you can see, it's 4104. And the, the time it took for me to click pause, he had already completely analyzed it, right? Um, and that's kind of the speed of this. this. This video is only five minutes long. And the speed of the analysis from beginning to end went from, hey, let's tune this command.exe query, add some high fidelity, high confidence to it to I found a password spray, a brute force attack, all this kind of stuff. And then he drills it further down and finds the 4104 of the actual script. So here's this full analysis. Pause it here. It's not good. Okay. Root cause. The failure, the failed logons were deliberately generated by a PowerShell script called invoke 80 threat simulation. Gives me the path. Amazing. The script was designed to simulate various scenarios of password spraying. Uh, and because he has the script, he was able to rip it apart, 
The script contains a function called attempt failed logon that deliberately attempts to log in with incorrect creds using different logon types. All of that is accurate and true of how this tool works. Here's the attack pattern. The script attempted to log in against multiple accounts, admin accounts, service, he breaks them down. Pretty cool. Failure details. All login attempts resulted in this particular status code and that reason, which corresponds to unknown username or bad password. The attacks were executed from the domain controller, so it was on a single machine. They were initiated by the administrator account, that's the, process, uh, the, the user who was using the pro PowerShell process, and the process name shows advanced API, which consists with the API call method used in the script, 100% accurate on those counts. Stats, multiple failed logon types were tied against each account. Um, so the way the script works is it will simulate against different logon types for all each of the different users meant to generate this data in your Active Directory test environment because you don't want to do this in prod um, and whatnot. So uh, he goes and pulls all this out. Attacks were timed very close together because there's no timing, I believe, in this tool. Um, and then the highest number was four against this admin user with logon type seven. Uh, this was a simulated attack. So um, yeah, I, I think all of this is pretty cool from a defender perspective, mainly because it's it really shows just kind of the power you can have with a proper MCP um, connected to your tool set as a, as a tier one analyst. Imagine, if, imagine back in the day you were chilling as your tier one analyst, you're in the queue, you're looking at events, you're looking at notables, um, EDR alerts, whatever it may be from your product. Imagine you had this MCP and you're just like, do these four things for me and or multiple MCPs and it goes queries Splunk, clears your EDR, runs a, a remote script on the endpoint to collect artifacts, pulls artifacts back, um, things like that. Imagine how much faster your tier one job would have been. Um, and I think that's the power of this. Yes, doom and gloom side, you're granting an API or whatever to an LLM, you're allowing it to run commands, you're allowing it to do these things, sure. Um, I don't know. I, that's kind of why I don't talk a lot about AI stuff is because of the doom and gloom side. I think there's a lot of power here. Um, yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, Claude didn't do what I asked him to do, which was to my command.exe query. Right. So we kind of went off the rails here and ended up finding, you know, malicious activity occurring in my environment. I think the cool part though, um, I keep saying that it is really cool. But I think the most important thing to kind of get out of something like this is that it can help you and it can speed up your investigation. It can make you much faster as a defender. Um, so yeah, like, subscribe. If you like seeing automated stuff like this, um, I have more. I have a lot of tooling I've built to automate things. Um, kind of the crazy thing too with using an MCP, it's like having a SOAR platform built into like cursor. Um, or if you're using another out like a local fat client or just command line, um, you can query these things all day. Anything that has an API, you can build your own MCP. Uh, I highly recommend using a local MCP. Don't use a cloud one. There's my security doom and gloom. Um, don't use a cloud MCP service or a directory or whatever, the registry or whatever. Um, just build your own. They're, they're that easy. And if you have the API docs, uh, maybe that's the next video. We'll build our own MCP together using AI. We'll have AI build an MCP to use the MCP to query whatever thing we want it to query against the cloud, some cloud app or whatever that has an API. Um, but yeah, anyway, hope you found that interesting. Hope you enjoyed watching Claude find the APT. Hope you uh, hope you thought this is a, it's a different way to look at MCP and AI. Uh, so anyway, have a great day. See y'all soon.